Hi everybody, it's Karen here from tapascolor.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, this is what I've been playing with today. I came across uh, this technique in the Craft Stamper magazine using um, pigment powders. So I use Stamping Up's Pigment Sprinkles and um, Inkjet Photo Paper. And I thought that sounds very interesting, so I'm going to have a go at it. And uh, these are some of the results. Uh, stay with me, uh, I'll show you what I did. So I've cut myself a piece of inkjet photo paper. Uh, this has a nice glossy finish. Um, I have a packet of this that's been lying around for a very long time. It was, um, it, it came as part of a package with some software that I bought and the uh, the weight of it is, is too heavy for my printer. It won't go through my printer. So it's been lying around doing absolutely nothing for um, a few years. So I'm going to use it today for this technique and I was delighted when I came across this technique because I thought, do you know what? That's something that I can use that paper for. All right, so I have um, three of the pigment sprinkles. They come in a pack of six. These are the colors that I'm using today. I am wearing gloves, not because there's anything dangerous or nasty about these, but because this is a messy technique. All right, I'm, you know, I'm just telling you now. I'm just warning you. And if I don't wear gloves, I will get it all over my hands. So I'm just very lightly, that's, probably ample putting down some of the melon mambo and I have mango melody so I'll we'll put some of that down as well I can't really go by the color of the the crystals because when you activate them magic happens and they become a different color uh, oh Okay, so that's probably much more than I need. Just going to tap those out. Now, I saw this technique um, in, a, in a magazine, and they were using brushes, which Stampin' Up! used to carry, but they now have um, their own colours, which are coordinate well with the... Uh, with the Stampin' Up! colour range. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want it running. I just want it kind of activated and bubbling up. So here is my piece of photo uh, photo paper, inkjet photo paper, and I'm just swooshing it onto my mat. And look at that. <laughs> and because it is inkjet paper it kind of grabs the colour straight away and I can go over the top of it and I am well happy with that result maybe a little bit more there so I'm just dab it until I'm, I'm happy with it and I'm going to put that on one side for the colours to dry but because, because it's inkjet paper that is not moving all right, so normally when I if, I if I did that, the colours would all kind of run into one another, but that is not happening. The inkjet paper just grabs it. Okay, so should we try a different colour? Why not? So just clean up with a bit of paper towel. So let's try... So this is Gorgeous Grape, and we have some Bermuda Bay, and shall we leave it at those two, or shall we throw in a tiny bit of the Melon Mambo again? Now, um, one of the things that the Stamping Up Pigment Sprinkles have that brushes don't have is that they have this lovely little um, cap and they come already uh, pierced because with brushes you have to if you want to do this kind of sprinkling action you have to pierce your own so that was Bermuda Bay 
even though it doesn't look very much like Bermuda Bay on my uh, on my blending pad here but it is trust me and this is now the gorgeous grape so just a few sprinkles not too many because a little bit of this goes a very very long way trust me oh wow okay loving those that's probably more water than I actually needed but never mind here's my photo paper my inkjet photo paper now of course you could do this with um, gloss paper with watercolor card of course you could you could do it with any of those things that's glued itself to my my map Let's bring that up. but for that instant grab see look at that that's not moving at all look at it for that instant grab Yeah, photo paper does the trick. Wow, look at that one. That's super rich. Okay, so I'm going to put that one on one side for the ink to dry. So after I finished playing around with the pigment sprinkles, I thought I'd have a go and see uh, how well the technique would work with some of the reinkers because uh, it kind of should right and i'm gonna do it slightly differently i'm just going to give this a light coating of water and i'm going to start with some this is daffodil delight so let's have some sprinkles of reinkers this is a mint macaron Ooh, oh, that came out a bit quicker than I thought it would. And some corn and clover. Okay. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a spritzing just to get the colours moving. And these are quite runny, quite smooshy. Here's my, and I've managed to spray some spots on it, but we're not going to let that bother us, are we? No, we're not. And we're going to smoosh that down. Lift it up, and ooh, I like that. And I've actually got plenty of ink left, and I've got another piece of card cut here somewhere. Not going to waste that ink. Oh no, let's go for take two. And as you can see from the marks on the, the back of the card, it's a jolly good thing I am wearing gloves. Okay, and this one is uh, a little bit paler. And again, but it just, the, the coating on the photo paper just grabs the ink and it just stays there. Right, so gonna leave those two dry as well and then I think I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna try and make something with them and here they are after they've had uh, a few days to dry and uh, I put them under some heavy books to kind of squash them flat because they did curl up a bit and um, okay so I can now create something out of them uh, or I can put them on, on one side and do something with them later uh, but just for the purposes of today I think I'm going to work on this one and I'm going to use my uh, my stamparatus uh, I've decided that I'm going to work on this piece today I'm going to put the others aside and maybe use them for different projects and I want to use the Eiffel Tower stamp from Parisian Beauty and I'm going to use a straight edge so that I line my stamp up so that it's uh, it's nice and straight because I don't generally do straight I have to have help so I'm happy with that so I can take that out of the way and I can pick up the stamp on the plate of the stamparatus alright so I'm going to use 
Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and I'm going to kind of rub the surface of the, the stamp with this because this is an um, this is a very detailed stamp it's one of our uh, I can't remember what they're called now but they are the, the ones that look a little bit like almost photographic quality and I'm just going to press that down and I'm going to take a look at it and because I want this image to be very very black I'm going to go again and this is uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to use the Stamparatus in the first place because I can stamp back in exactly the same place and as long as nothing's moved a tiny bit and I didn't notice I should have a lovely clear black image. I want to trim this down to be quite um, a tall skinny shape and to do that I'm going to trim off some of the edges and I'm using uh, the edge of my trimmer here as a as a way to balance things out. So I've lined that edge up with that bottom corner of the Eiffel Tower and I'm just going to trim that away and I can keep that bit and now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing again on this side so the edge of the trimmer lines up with that inner corner there of the Eiffel Tower and I can trim that away and now that should be pretty well balanced and I can trim a little bit off the, the top so this is six inches and I don't really want it to be more than five and a quarter so let's trim a bit off there it's going to be a bit too low I think so let's let's go to five and a half to begin with and then let's take the other quarter of an inch off the bottom okay so I'm having a look at that and seeing if that's balanced and I think I need to trim this side a little bit more just a little bit just to fraction it okay and I'm happy with that for the front of my card And just for fun, I'm going to add um, a little bit of a hand-drawn border for this one. So I'm going to start by marking a little dot with my journaling pen. And I don't want to do across the whole thing. I'm just one kind to uh, emphasise the corners a little bit. So I'm going to start about halfway along and at about the same level. And I'm keeping my eye on where I'm going to. So I'm keeping my eye on that dot because I want that line to join up with that dot. And if I keep my eye on that little dot there, then uh, they will meet together. So same thing over here. I'm going to go just under halfway up. Start at about the same distance from the edge. And I'm just keeping my eye on that dot. And if my hand shakes, that's fine, because I want that kind of hand-drawn look. And I've got my, my little border. So same thing in this corner, draw my dot, keep my eye on it, start about halfway up and just keeping my eye on where I want to be, I'm just going to sketch in my corner. And I like the sort of um, uh, I've cut a piece of basic black um, and it's not my normal standard 
card size so this is three and a half inches by five and three quarters so it's a little bit um, a little bit skinnier than the kind of card that I usually do and I've cut it so that I've got um, a thicker border uh, towards the bottom of the card so it's not even all the way round so I'm just going to bring this in I'm trying to keep an eye on my monitor screen to make sure that you can actually see the uh, the stamped image because this is so super shiny and there we are and here is the card finished um, now I did trim that bottom border down a little bit because my original idea was to have the whole of the front of the card uh, just in the basic black but when I put it up against the um, the, the white of the card background it, it, I kind of liked the white border so I trimmed it down a bit and I trimmed my uh, my card base down a bit so that it was just a nice little skinny little card thought about adding some more sentiments in the end decided do you know what for me this is all about that background and that image in the front and I'm just going to leave it I'm not going to mess about with it uh, these other two pieces um, well I have got some ideas particularly for this one and I can show you um, a prototype that I did uh, using my, my first attempt at this technique and uh, I've also done a bit of die cutting on this piece this is the piece that we used the, uh, the reinkers for not the the pigment sprinkles and I really like the way this one came out and I think it looks particularly effective if I just get a bit of basic black if I pop that behind it like so I think that looks particularly effective so if I uh, look for um, a suitable sentiment I can pop that uh, on there so that's uh, another card that I can make uh, yeah, this one was using the, uh, oh crikey, what's it called? It's the Sea Silhouette ones, is it called? It's called Silhouette Scenes. So it was this stamp from Silhouette Scenes. Uh, I used that one. This one, uh, I don't like the way this one came out so much. Um, mainly because I, the colours didn't work the way I wanted them to. But... I will probably uh, use this one and um, you know punch some shapes out of it or just uh, use it for a background and kind of cover it up uh, but that was a lot of fun I really enjoyed doing that and I hope that you enjoyed watching it and I hope that you give this technique a go because I will bet that you have got somewhere lurking around some uh, cheap and cheerful inkjet photo paper and if so use it in your crafting but that's all for today thank you very much for joining me and I hope I'll see you again sometime soon but by now Bye-bye.